Welcome students to the SRBPS Virtual Classroom Program. I am Prerna Rathi, your Biology teacher. I hope you are making full use of our YouTube channel and learning through it. So students, let us start today's class. Today we will be discussing Chapter 3, Human Reproduction where we would be dealing with the male reproductive and the female reproductive system. In both the male and the female reproductive system, we shall discuss the primary sex organ, the accessory ducts and the glands and we would talk about the external genitalia. Let's start with the human male reproductive system. The human male reproductive system consists of the following organs. The primary sex organs in the human male is testis, and the secondary sex organs are the accessory ducts and the accessory glands. The accessory ducts are retitestis, vas afferentia, epididymis and vas deferens. Accessory glands are seminal vesicle, prostate gland and bulbourethral gland also known as the Cowper's gland. The external genitalia in case of human male reproductive system is the penis. Let us discuss them one by one. Let us start with the primary sex organ that is testis. In the human male, a pair of testis is situated right outside the abdominal cavity in muscular sac of skin called scrotum. Scrotum helps to keep the temperature of the testis 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius lower than the internal body temperature as that is the optimum temperature required for the process of spermatogenesis. Each testis is oval in shape and it measures about 4 to 5 cm in length and 2 to 3 cm in width. The outermost covering is a dense fibrous membrane called the tunica albuginea. Now, each testis has around 250 compartments called the testicular lobules. Each testicular lobule has around 1 to 3 seminiferous tubule. The seminiferous tubules consist of two types of cells namely the male germ cells called the spermatogonia and the sertoli cells. The male germ cells or the spermatogonia undergo meiotic division to produce sperms whereas the sertoli cells provide nutrition to the developing sperms. Apart from this the region just outside the seminiferous tubules has Lydic cells or the interstitial cells which are responsible for the production of an androgen called testosterone. This is the diagram, sectional view of the seminiferous tubule. You can clearly see the spermatogonia cells which are leading to the formation of spermatozoa and there are Sertoli cells which provide nutrition to the developing spermatozoa. There are interstitial or the lydic cells responsible for the secretion of testosterone. This is the diagrammatic view of the male reproductive system. As you can clearly see, there are testes, testicular lobules are visible. Now let us discuss the accessory duct system from this diagram itself. The most, the smallest duct that arises from the seminiferous tubule is known as the rete testis. The rete testis from each seminiferous tubule open into vasa efferentia. Several vasa efferentia open into the epididymis, which is a long coiled tube present along the posterior surface of each testis. It continues as the vas deferens and ascends into the abdomen to loop over the urinary bladder as you can clearly see. Basically, epididymis temporarily stores the non-motile and immature sperms which are later on transferred to the vas deferens. The vas deferens passes from the urinary bladder and joins the ejaculatory duct. The urethra originates from the urinary bladder which extends through the penis into the external opening called the urethral meatus. Now this urethral meatus shall carry urine from the bladder and sperms from the vas deferens. So in the human male remember there is just one single opening called the urethral meatus for the secretion of both the sp uh, sperms or the semen and the urine from the urinary bladder. Let us now discuss the accessory glands. There are three accessory glands present in the human male reproductive system. The first is the prostate gland. The prostate gland as you have already seen in the diagram surrounds the urethra and it produces a milky secretion. 
this milky secretion forms the major part of the semen. It contains citric acid, lipids and enzymes. The secretion of the prostate gland helps to nourish and activate the spermatozoa to swim in the female reproductive system. The next glands that we have to discuss are the seminal vesicles. The seminal vesicles secrete a mucusy and watery alkaline basic fluid which contains fructose which provides energy to the sperms. Now fructose provides a very easy and good source of energy as it can be directly entered into glycolysis for further breakdown and production of energy. Last are your bulbourethral gland or the cowper's gland. They are attached to the urethra just below the prostate gland. They are not re responsible for any secretion into the semen but they secrete a mucusy fluid for the lubrication of penis during copulation. Now the male external genitalia. The male external genitalia is known as penis. It is the male copulatory organ which has some amount of erectile tissue and blank vascular spaces. When the male is sexually excited, these vascular spaces get filled with blood and the erectile tissue leads to erection of the penis. The distal end of the penis is known as the glans penis. The glans penis is covered with a skin like structure called the foreskin or the prepuce. That is all about male reproductive system. Let us now discuss the female reproductive system. Just similar to the male reproductive system, we are hereby going to discuss the primary sex organ, the ovary. Secondary sex organ, the accessory ducts which are the fallopian tube, uterus, cervix and vagina and the accessory glands, the mammary glands, the external genitalia that is vulva. As you can see very clearly in the diagram, there are a pair of ovaries present in the female reproductive system. The ovaries are the primary sex organ. They are responsible for the production of ovum and two very important female hormones, progesterone and estrogen. They are attached to the pelvic wall by ligaments. Then let us now discuss the accessory ducts beginning with the OB ducts, the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tube is further divided into infundibulum, ampulla and isthmus. Infundibulum is the foremost part which has finger like projections called fimbriae which are responsible for capturing the ovum after ovulation. Then the next swollen part is known as ampulla and isthmus is that part of the fallopian tube or oviduct which connects the oviduct to the uterus. Next let us now discuss the uterus. Uterus or the womb is a single hollow pear shaped structure which is supported by ligaments and is attached to the pelvic wall. It is present between the urinary bladder and the rectum. The lower part of the uterus is very narrow and it is known as cervix which leads into the opening or the birth canal called the vagina. Together cervix and vagina will form the birth canal. The wall of the uterus as you can see has three structures. It is made up of three layers. The innermost endometrium which is rich in blood supply and helps in the formation of placenta during gestation. The middle layer is myometrium which is a muscular layer which helps for labor, contractions and uh, dilation during parturition. The external peri perimetrium which helps in protection. Fine. So next let us discuss the accessory glands. Now the accessory glands present here in the female reproductive system are the mammary glands which help to feed the young one after the parturition process. Human female has a pair of mammary glands or the breast that contain glandular tissue as well as the fatty tissue. Each glandular tissue is further divided into around 15 to 20 mammary lobes. These mammary lobes have alveoli inside them. The alveoli open into mammary tubules. Har ek alveoli kis mein open hongi? Mammary tubule mein. Mammary tubule jo hongi, wo sab milke kahan pe open out hongi? In a mammary duct. These mammary duct join to form a wider mammary ampulla. This mammary ampulla is further connected to the lactiferous duct. And the lactiferous duct 
is present just before the nipple through which the milk is released. I hope this is clear. After the parturition, this is used for feeding the young one. Last is the external genitalia or vulva. Vulva consists of the following parts. The first part is mons pubis. Mons pubis is a cushion of fatty tissue covered with skin as well as pubic hair. The next is the labia majora. Labia majora are two folds of fatty tissue which extend down from the mons pubis up till the vaginal opening and right inside the labia majora two very small similar kind of folds are present which are known as labia minora inside the labia minora there is a vestibule vestibule means khali space there is a space containing a tiny opening of the urethra for passing out the urine and another large mouth of vagina for the sexual intercourse then there is clitoris which is a tiny finger like structure which lies at the upper junction of both the labia minora above the urethral opening. Last is hymen. Hymen is a thin membrane which partially or completely covers the vaginal opening. Normally the hymen breaks during the first intercourse or during various sports activities like horse riding, cycling, swimming, sudden jolt or a fall etc. Fine. So this is all about the female reproductive system. Let us recapitulate what we have learnt in today's lecture. Students, we have learnt about the male reproductive system where we discussed the primary sex organ, testis, accessory ducts, retitestis, vas efferentia, epididymis and vas deferens, glands, prostate gland, seminal vesicle and bulbourethral gland, external genitalia that is penis. The female reproductive system then, the primary sex organ that is a pair of ovaries, accessory ducts, the fallopian tube, cervix, vagina, then uterus and uh, the accessory glands called the mammary gland, external genitalia called the vulva. So students, I hope you learned and understood what I taught. Until next class. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Take care. Goodbye.